Welcome. Uh, we transition to talk about uh, Paul's letter to the Galatians. Uh, this uh, typically precedes our talk of Romans, and there's a very, very good reason for that. The content and material that we've seen in 1 Corinthians develops into 2 Corinthians, and 2 Corinthians transitions to Galatians, and Galatians to Romans. If you're looking at your text, you realize that Galatians comes out of, uh, you know, just before Philippians and right after 2 Corinthians. But Romans is written last. It's only, and Galatians is by no means one of, it probably is situated somewhere in between 1 and 2 Corinthians, perhaps in another spot. But the reason the order of the books is such is because of their length. And so 2 Corinthians, of course, is longer. And um, and so we, we stumble upon Galatians, and of course Romans is the longest letter, and that is the, at the front. So there is an issue uh, right away, and that is where exactly is the letter directed? Where does Paul intend to send it? Now you may recall that the, the area of Galatia was the target audience for Paul's very first missionary journey. So there are several hypotheses that try to conjecture where exactly Paul wants to send the letter. So the first hypothesis is that Paul may send this to, the, to South Galatia. Maybe he wrote this on the way to the Council of Jerusalem. Um, I rule that out uh, for reasons that will become clear once we get into the text. The second option, churches of South Galatia, Paul uh, established on the first journey of AD 46 through 48. So we could have in mind these churches that Paul looks at. Third, uh, maybe a Northern Galatian or uh, a Northern Galatian uh, target, maybe Macedonia or even Corinth, written from uh, Macedonia or Corinth, and this would be in 56 or 57. Uh, four, maybe this is North Galatia, possibly uh, written on the second missionary journey between 49 and 53. And I am going to go with, I am going to go with option four. Um, I'm going to go with option four to the Northern Galatia uh, spots. Um, and you can see that the map, Galatia is a huge area, basically the whole line of, um, of, of, of cities and the region that we would describe as Turkey. I mean, that's a big, giant region. Um, so, uh, so this is the region, and I'm supposing that these cities right here, these are the cities that Paul may have in mind. Perhaps maybe Laodicea, Colossae, uh, he does send a letter to, to the Colossians later. Here's Ephesus. So there is this probability that Paul has worn this path, and so perhaps that's where Paul wants to go. The Lycus River Valley, uh, perhaps on one of Paul's visits, uh, maybe he begins this church at Laodicea or Hierapolis or Colossae. Clearly Colossae is a Pauline providence to it. Laodicea, you may recall, uh, is featured in the book of Revelation. So the church is established there. It fits the geographic disposition of a Pauline, um, you know, Galatian uh, visit. So perhaps that's it. So Derby, Lystra, Iconium, uh, Pisidian Antioch. This follows a uh, southern uh, Galatian hypo hypothesis from Galatians 1-2. So if we were going to go through and show where that is, uh, we would be unsuccessful. Well, here's Derby. Derby, um, Lystra, Pisidian Antioch over here. Uh, and then um, that's uh, if that's the southern region, I believe it is between 49 and 53. I don't believe it's um, uh, this early, um, but let's continue on. Some are going to point to Ankara and Pacinus uh, as possible destinations in the north. Um, I would also uh, push 
for Pergamum, which is up here. Um, now, Paul, there's no record of Paul visiting Pergamum, uh, but it seems like that would be a likely spot for him to land. We have to remember, we only have a small bit of Paul's writing and a small record of what he actually did. Uh, Pergamum was a major center. It was where uh, Caesar Augustus posted his res gestae, the, the whole line of, of his divine acts um, that, he, that he published. And it's still there. You can go and, um, and visit uh, and, and see that it's still there. So to some degree or another, we're talking about Asia Minor here, Turkey. And I want to make a little push to, to kind of advance a pet theory that I have. And that is these other letters, Romans, Corinthians, Ephesians, Colossians, they have concrete destinations in mind. Letters that are written to people have those people in the address. Philemon, um, if you think that Timothy is authentic. Thessaloniki, that's a city. Galatia is a, just a giant region. Why, why does the letter never get set on a concrete destination? And my, my theory on this, and it's just pure intuition, but it is intuition based on Romans and other materials that I think are important, and that is I don't think Galatians worked. I think the letter doesn't succeed. I think it doesn't get situated with a concrete spot, probably meant to be a circular letter, but wouldn't you anticipate that that letter would get a, um, you know, some kind of a, of a concrete spot? Look at how Paul begins this letter. Paul, an apostle sent neither by human commission nor from human authorities, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the members of God's family who are with me to the churches of Galatia. So he does have a plurality of churches in mind, but these these uh, plurality, are not, they're not named at all. And I think that's very interesting. And, and maybe it is indication that uh, Paul's letter ultimately falls on deaf ears or it's unsuccessful. Uh, this is a letter that is drastic in tone, as we will see. So a little more about where Paul is directing this letter, a little bit about the situation and the cities around. This is a, the city of Derby, and uh, ancient Derby uh, would have been, is, is buried beneath that mound. Um, uh, many cities in the ancient world are buried over now, and so you see just, just a kind of a round heap and it is the accretion of dirt and detritus over years of uh, really no, no activity. This is especially true in the Holy Land. Um, so they're called tells, T-E-L, tells. And so you go down in um, through the ancient world and look through these cities where you can guess their locations. And you see many, many places like this. Iconium is another spot in the Lycus River Valley, and it, this is a really uh, fascinating little carved into the rock. The, this is an extremely mountainous region, and the so a lot of the a lot of the archaeology, a lot of the artifacts that survive are built, carved right into that mountain. Here we have a coin. Uh, this is a Phrygian coin. Um, it is a, a coin that was dated to 50 AD and minted here. You don't have a central mint. Um, throughout the Roman Empire, you had different places that would uh, put different things on their coins. Uh, and numismatics uh, provides a, a wealth of information for us about um, the area, what was important to them. Laodicea. Laodicea is another uh, city, and just in case you can't, remember uh, where Laodicea is. Uh, Laodicea is right here, right right there, right in the middle of this very mountainous Cappadocian region. Interesting theory, by the way. Can you see G-A-L-A-T, Galatia? The New York Times ran an article where they traced the people groups that really inhabited. This was, this was farmland. They specialized in wool and uh, shepherding and linen, cloth, and so um, a, a reporter, a historical reporter, 
Of course, you can see Jerusalem down here and Nazareth up here. So, but a reporter followed the, these people around. And isn't it interesting that um, you may remember these folks too? Uh, in France, you know, uh, what was France called? Gaul, right? And then further to the uh, west, um, the island where uh, people go to go to the end of the rainbow, um, where the leprechauns are, the Celts. These are all related people groups, Gauls, Celts, and Galatians. Uh, so these nomadic people groups wandered um, all over the ancient world. Fascinating article of all places in the New York Times. New York Times can be a, a place of really interesting stuff. Um, so Laodicea right here. Uh, let's find Iconium. Iconium is here, Derby, right? So we need Lystra. We want to see Lystra. So here's another spot for, uh, here's another slide with uh, some ruins from Laodicea. Um, some, some interesting, this, now I, I can't tell you for sure if these are just Greek or if these are Greek and Roman. This is Pisidian Antioch. It's, there's a big giant acro Corinth. This gives you an idea of, or, acro, it's an acro, uh, it's like a, it's a cro outcropping. An Acropolis, right? So you've got this um, Acro Corinth is this that big thing in the city of Corinth. This is that's different. So here in Pisidian Antioch, you've got that big mound. If you've ever been to the uh, central coast, northern coast of California, right in the middle, you'll be driving down Palm Coast, Palm Coast, the, uh, the California, uh, you know, highway, Pacific Coast Highway, and you'll see this uh, you know, jutting out of the out of the ocean, these big mountains like Morro Bay, and uh, really beautiful. Well, here it's it's kind of like that, um, arid, high elevation, um, and these mountainous regions house some of these tiny little uh, towns. Here's the Cardo Maximus, the road that connects these places, um, and again uh, a retraced. Paul's first missionary journey, where you can get a, a little clearer picture, perhaps, of the uh, where Paul ends up going on missionary trip number one. So what happened in these Galatian churches? And looking at the text itself, things started well. Um, the, some teachers arrived after Paul had already gone, however, and Paul and these teachers were not on the same page. The definitive commentary on Galatians is Lou Martin's Galatians commentary in the Anchor Bible series, and he makes a big deal about these teachers and how they how they uh, follow after Paul and torment him. So these teachers are, are are really what this letter becomes about because they're trying to switch around Paul's gospel. Um, see if I can make this any clearer and. Yeah, that's, that's a lot clearer right there. Um, so when you when you look at uh, at the text, it breaks down into the in the following ways: um, the greetings in ver, ver, chapter one one through five, the letter proper one six through six eleven, and then that section breaks down. So you can subdivide it a little further: one six through two twenty one, Paul's gospel, a heavenly gospel with a divine divinely called apostle. Uh, maybe the beginnings of a problem here and Paul's exasperation with the situation at Galatia. In 3, 1 through 5, 26, the differences between the law and the spirit. And then Paul substantiates his claim with proofs from theology and scripture along the way. And then 6, 1 through 11, exhortation to holy living. And then 6, 12 through 17 is the closing. It's basically the outline of the, of the text. Another one used by Hans Dieterbetz in his commentary in the Hermeneia series, uh, you can see the, um, this is a rhetorical commentary, and so it uses uh, aspects of Roman rhetoric. So the epistolary prescript, introduction, exordium, the narratio, propositio. So the, the, the narratio is a little story. You can see that's autobiographical about Paul, the propositions, then the, the argument itself, the exhortation and the epistolary postscript. That's a little walk down. We're going to go into the text a little in depth in the next video. Hey, let me know what you learned.